Bacal, Jufaren, Saracunda, Brikama, Banjul. These are some of the places that you'll find in the Gambia, West Africa. Gambia. It's the land of smiling faces, and it's one of the greatest nations. It's the Gambia, the Gambia, West Africa. All the things you see there makes you want to be there in the Gambia, Gambia. in the Gambia. Well, we're well, talking about the Gambia, the Gambia. Put your hands up in the Gambia, the Gambia. President Yaya Jame, the man they say gets things done in the Gambia, the Gambia, West Africa. The land. One of the best tourist destinations anywhere on the planet is the Gambia. It's called the Smiling Coast of Africa, and it's one of the most beautiful jewels in the whole continent of Africa. It is referred to as the Smiling Coast because of its geometric shape. For when you look at the Gambia on the map, it appears as a smile looking right back at you. The nature, the culture, and the people all make for a wonderful Gambian experience, one you'll never forget long after you've left its peaceful shores. The Swedish discovered the Gambia as a tourist destination purely by accident in 1965. A small group of tourists from that country was on its way to a jungle resort in southern Senegal when their plane mistakenly landed at Yundum Airport in the Gambia. It was after the door of his small aircraft opened that Bertil Harding, the tour operator, realized his mistake but decided to stay anyway. To his surprise, what he had discovered turned into a new tourist destination. For the next 20 years, the Gambia became the most popular destination for Scandinavians, and his travel company, Vin Gresser, brought hundreds of thousands of tourists from there to this gem. Today, a main road leading to the Gambia's tourism development area is named after him. Despite its little size on the map, the Gambia is a country with big things, and culture is the foremost thing that binds Gambians together as one strong community. Each ethnic group found in the Gambia can also be identified by its culture. An example of these rich cultures are the griots, or jellies, who are professional historians, praise singers, and musical entertainers, and are among the Mandinkas and Manding people. Major ethnic groups include the Fula, Jola, Mandinka, Sarahule, and Wolof. There is no part of the Gambia that is inhabited by one single ethnic group. The Mandinkas maintain a remarkably unified culture, relying on their griots to remind them of their glorious place in history. The name Gambia, um, I have so many versions. The name, the first name was Gamra. And then, according to history, as time goes on, because so many Europeans visited the Gambia. First, the Phoenicians, the Cartaginians, the Portuguese, and the British. They were the last European to visit the Gambia. They colonized the Gambia. They inherited Gambia from the Portuguese. There are still certain buildings in the Gambia, especially Banjul, that were built by the Portuguese. For instance, the Secretariat, the Quadrangle, is not from, far from State House, where the President is. Um, the first name was Gamra, then Gambia. The first capital was Fort James Island. That's not far from Albreda. It used to be the first capital. At that time, there was nothing in Banjul, the present capital. Banjul, before independence, it was Bathurst. It was named after Lord Bathurst. Each ethnic group speaks its own language, but English is commonly spoken as well as being the official language. It is also common for someone to speak between two to four of the local language. 
The most striking feature of the Gambia national culture is its ethnic diversity, with all of the ethnic groups making significant contributions to the country's social and economic history. This is what Gambians call the Gambian identity, bringing a common understanding and purpose and taking precedence over ethnic allegiances. The Gambian people and the River Gambia. Named after the River Gambia, which flows through its length from east to west for 300 miles. The Gambia is Africa's smallest country. It has a population of about 1.5 million people within a narrow belt extending from both sides of the River Gambia. The population is predominantly Muslim, with Christians of different denominations, including Anglicans, Methodists, and Roman Catholics. Friday is one of the holiest days on the Muslim calendar, and Muslims can be seen gathered in rows facing the east to observe the Friday noon prayers. There is, however, no fanaticism, and great understanding prevails between the religious and the ethnic groups, which is one of the reasons why the Gambia is one of the greatest places to live, with people from various faiths living together in harmony and celebrating each other's religious holidays. The Gambia meshes deeply with natural African customs, cultural motifs, and traditions. Known for its hospitality and being one of the most stable countries in Africa, the Gambia is home for a large immigrant community and refugees, mainly from various West African countries, India and Lebanon. In the past, the river's fame lay in the fact that, for sailing vessels, it was navigable at least as far as the country's eastern boundary. It is one of the finest waterways in West Africa. More recently, it has become the target for government development plans, including an extension to the Port of Banjul, fisheries development, hydrological surveys, and a rice development project. In addition to ferries, ships, and cutters loaded with groundnuts, the country's main export crop can be seen plying up and down the river, and dugout canoes used by fishermen are also a common sight. Their existence, however, does not diminish the scene of tranquil beauty of the great river flowing majestically westward into the Atlantic Ocean. Favorite tourist destinations in the Gambia. Though the country is one of the smallest countries in Africa, it has a lot to offer and many interesting places to visit. Banjul, the capital city of the Gambia, is an island on the tip of a peninsula at the mouth of the River Gambia. The center of town is the July 22nd Square, formerly McCarthy Square, a public park with Albert Market to the east and the deep water port with its wharves and jetties to the south. The nearby towns of Bacau, Fajara, and Saracunda are rapidly expanding. Only a few hotels are located in Banjul. The majority of hotels are located in Bacau and Fajara, alongside the Atlantic Ocean with the world's most beautiful sandy beaches. Visitors won't want to miss Albert Market with its colors, music, fabrics, and crafts. Popular souvenirs include batik, gold and silver filigree jewelry, wood carvings, and leather goods. Tailors can quickly make clothes to order on the spot at bargain prices. The National Museum of Gambia on Independence Drive houses wooden carvings, old maps, and photos of the country. Arch 22, the city gate commemorating the Second Republic of the Gambia, has a museum, cafe, and great views of the area from the top. Day cruises through the mangrove creeks around Banjul are a popular excursion, with birds and monkeys spotted regularly along the tour. Yeah, we are happy to see this. We want everybody to know Gambia. And, uh, it's a peaceful country. Gambia is a very nice country. And the people are lovely. They need everybody to come over. Everybody is quite welcome to Gambia. Hence you come, you will also be like us, because we show you how we live. We show you the tradition, the, 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 the moral, and the culture. You know. So we welcome everybody. All nationalities are welcome, especially the American people.
Escaping the city, visitors to the Gambia will discover the nearby Abuko Nature Reserve. Only 20 miles from the city center, on the way to the Banjul International Airport. The reserve was established in 1977 to help protect and preserve the Gambia's flora and fauna for future generations. The reserve features diverse vegetation, over 200 species of birds, monkeys, hyenas, antelope, hippos, and crocodiles. Safaris can be arranged easily according to visitors' interests. Jufare, James Island, and Tendaba Camp. Situated in the center of the River Gambia, opposite the fishing village of Albreda, James Island was the site of a fortress which was originally built by the Corlanders, otherwise known as the Baltic Germans, in 1651. During the course of history, it changed hands several times between various European powers seeking control of trade on the River Gambia, but it ended up with the British. The island is a World Heritage Site, but the first application to UNESCO failed because they thought it has the same function as, as Gore, which is a place where slaves are kept and then exported. Now they, they found out that it, it, this one is unique in that it is used to be a slave, uh, a fort for bringing in slaves, and now it has been converted to something uh, like a police, to a police station to keep the slave boats from coming into the river down there. During the slave trade, it served as an important transit point from where slaves were shipped across the Atlantic to either the Americas or Europe. The ruins of the fort still stand on the tiny island, which is visited annually by thousands of tourists. Tendaba Camp, 100 miles upriver from Banjul, was the Gambia's first inland hotel, constructed to replicate an African village with traditional huts. The camp is a good starting point for day trips by boat, for bird watching, or to visit the West Kiang National Park, which was established in 1987 with over 300 species of birds, as well as the West African manatee, Sinatunga, and antelopes. The setting for Alex Haley's novel Roots, Jufareg is a traditional village, an easy trip from Banjul, and now a part of the Roots Homecoming Festival, a biannual celebration of African heritage. This week-long festival features music, dance, workshops, excursions, and other activities designed to help visitors of African background discover their roots. Jufare is the village where the then small boy Kunta Kinte was kidnapped by slave traders and sent to America as a young slave. At nearby Fort Albreda and Fort James, visitors can see many reminders of colonial history. About 100 miles east of the Atlantic coast, the vegetation changes from swamps to thick forests, and many islands appear in the river. Five of these, the largest of which is Baboon Island, form a park known for its chimpanzee rehabilitation project designed to reacclimate chimps from labs and zoos to return to the wild. This chimpanzee rehabilitation project registered a great success with the multiplying chimps. The project has been working since 1969 and gives orphan chimps the chance to grow up in their natural environment. Basse. The Gambia's easternmost town, Basse, is a lively settlement with trading houses from the turn of the century, shops, and a riverside market. For hikers and explorers, the town is a good starting point for trips to the interior. Resorts and accommodations. There are four main resort areas in what is referred to as the tourism development area, the palm fringe coastline overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. There are modern five-star hotels, as well as small but comfortable motels and guest houses. Outside this area, there are exotic camps, mainly situated on the banks of the beautiful River Gambia. 
Most hotels in the Gambia are geared primarily to cater to package tours. Accommodations are usually booked in the winter season, which is from November to May. With a total number of more than 7,500 beds today, the Gambia has come a long way in hotel capacity building. In 1967, when tourism emerged in the Gambia, there were only 52 beds. Most of the hotels are self-contained complexes set in spacious gardens and generally cater to the needs of most tourists. In recent years, the number of hotels has increased significantly and the trend is still spiraling upward. There are about 50 camps, lodges and motels in the rural areas, which provide basic but comfortable accommodation and food for most tourists on excursions or other visitors wishing to discover the real Gambia. Two of the most luxurious of these are the Sindola Safari Lodge, owned by the Five Star Caraba Hotel and Makasudu Culture Forest. The former is located in Kenalai, the home village of the President of the Republic, and the latter is a world-renowned ecotourism resort. The other camps are mainly built with local materials, and most of them are situated on the banks of the river, offering a vantage point for boat rides, fishing, and bird watching. Some are located along the Atlantic coastline. Most of the camps have electricity and fans, while others use kerosene lamps to light up the rooms and walkways. Camp visitors normally wake up to the melody of birds in the surrounding trees. Echo-minded tourists will enjoy camp visits. Let's talk about two great hotel accommodations. If you want to be away from the crowd, maybe the five-star Coconut Residence is the place for you. Since its opening in 1998, the Coconut Residence has established a reputation of gracious hospitality with an atmosphere of elegance and sophistication. Surrounded by lush tropical foliage, the Coconut Residence captures the beauty and peace of the Gambia, making it the perfect hideaway. Cobbled paths lead through the garden to the garden suites, private pool suites, and onward to the private villas. High ceiling rooms decorated in an eclectic style with bright yellow walls, with furnishings from Asia, India, and Morocco to complete the picture. The Coconut Residence was built eight years ago, and over the years they've added on a couple of extensions as well, um, and just developed it a little bit more. It's owned and managed by um, a Moroccan Gambian and his partner, who are the developers of the, of the Coconut Residence, um, the architects, the designers, um, and who are behind the ethos of, of Coconut Residence. And, the Coconut Residence really, the ethos of it is that you're not entering a hotel, you're entering somebody's residence and guests are treated as, as if they're at home and are meant to really feel at home during their, their stay with us. The Ocean Bay Hotel and Resort is located in the very heart of Cape Point a suburb just outside of Banjul, in Gambia's finest beach district. This tropical oasis blends modern African opulence with contemporary elegance and style. It's situated about 20 kilometers from the Gambia International Airport, about a 30-minute ride. It has a breathtaking view of the Atlantic Ocean and the Gambia River. With swaying palms and lovely sunsets, the resort reflects Africa in its truest sense, a true vision of loveliness. All one needs to do to find heaven is to simply walk out of the resort's gates onto miles of pristine beach, graced by soft and warm sunshine and cool sapphire waves. It's an experience never to be forgotten. There's always fun times in the Gambia. Whether you're jet skiing, windsurfing, horseback riding, or you just want to relax with a soothing massage, it's all yours. Tea off time is whenever you want it in the Gambia. The Fajara Club has an 18 hole course, which is close to most of the resorts. Enjoy a picturesque walk along a nature trail, or 
Maybe you'd prefer to shop at one of the many exotic boutiques. You name it, it's all in the Gambia. You'll enjoy nightlife in the Gambia, dancing at the clubs or entertainment at the beach resort. 